So, uh, 12 hours ago, I showed everyone, or I read from the pages that contain two of my favorite quotes, right, from Dignaga and Long Chimpa about conceptualization. <laughs> But since this is a very interesting section, uh, let's just move along to page 108, last paragraph on 108. So, even as things arise, <clears throat> pristinely naked awareness, in which there is no context either for the arising or for what arises, is identified as that which abides as timeless awareness, the continuous mode by which responsiveness arises. So remember here, responsiveness is the display of your mind. When you look at it in terms of a dream, when you're sleeping, the actual dream is a response to your mind. It's a co-emergent response. It is also identified by implication as the fundamental state that abides in all its nakedness in its own place as naturally occurring timeless awareness. And since there is no dichotomy between awareness's essence and its natural dynamic energy, it is non-dual, naturally occurring, timeless awareness, free of elaboration, referred to as the unique sphere of being. Naturally arising awareness states, Within awareness free of elaboration, how could there be confusion or non-recognition of awareness? Within timeless awareness free of ordinary mind, how could there be habitual patterns or distortions? And the reverberation of sound states? It is characterized as empty yet lucid awareness. Its nature unadulterated by anything whatsoever. The extremes of dualistic perception are resolved. And the true nature of phenomenon is pure in its very essence. And the perfect dynamic energy of the lion states, In essence, timeless awareness's own manifestations do not entail the ordinary mind's conceptual process. Sense objects in the past and sense objects in the future, sensory appearances are directly cut through. And the six expanses states, Within mind itself, a state of supreme equalness, emanations of the supreme pervasive state manifest, and so I, Samantabhadra, the all-good, have revealed its timeless connection to sensory appearances and non-duality. And remember, Samantabhadra is synonymous with your original mind, also known as Kuntazampo. The all good, okay? Within mind itself, which is beyond characterization, phenomena manifest in great number. I, Samantabhadra, have revealed this to be non-dual natural freedom. Within mind itself, which is inexpressible, words manifest yet have no basis. I, Samantabhadra, have revealed this to be beyond the scope of expression or imagination. Within mind itself, which cannot be sought, the supreme, naturally occurring state is awareness's own manifestation. I, Samantabhadra, have revealed this to be supreme, naturally occurring, timeless awareness. Within mind itself, which is undistorted, sensory appearances are free of being conditioned sense objects. I, Samantabhadra, have revealed this to be the enlightened intent of supreme, 
natural purity. Within mind itself, which is non-conceptual, since what manifests naturally and continuously does so without being reified. I, Samantabhadra, have revealed this to be the essence of sense objects as lucid, self-knowing awareness. Within mind itself, which entails no deliberation, the spontaneous vastness of natural abiding manifests. I, Samantabhadra, have revealed this to be the enlightened intent of the natural resolution of the four sounds. Within mind itself, which entails no focusing of attention, what would ordinarily cause mind to stir manifests instead as naturally pure. So this is a great um, line right here for those of you familiarizing with awareness, getting to know it, um, getting to know sort of uh, the essence of Dzogchen. It says, it entails no focusing of attention, but would ordinarily cause mind to stir manifest instead as naturally pure. So you begin, uh, this goes back to not renouncing samsara, but the perception of samsara shifts. So you may even appear as an ordinary being uh, undergoing the stresses of this life. You may appear that way to somebody else, to you. Everything is is pure and beautiful, even when we're crying or yelling. You know. So, I, Samantha Bhadra, have revealed this to be meditative stability as the natural freedom underlying reification. Within mind itself, free of ordinary mental processes, this manifestation of profound insight entails no deliberation. Asamantabhadra have revealed this to be the enlightened intent of the resolution of coming and going. Within mind itself, which does not involve the reification of objects, pure perceptions manifest continuously. Asamantabhadra have revealed this to be meditative absorption as the supreme display. So here we we see um, how the pure land is here now, isn't it? Um, and Dzogchen asks you to test that. A test if what the yogis are saying is true and allow some of our grasping and labeling to ease up to possibly begin to embrace this pure land and your own enlightenment, your own perfection and completion a sense of completion as well do we all deserve to feel complete uh, we've somehow conditioned ourselves and been conditioned to constantly be on the go and when you're constantly running 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 uh, it's very difficult to find peace in that and then you're always tackling everything whether you're your child whether you're speaking to somebody on the phone or relaxing, uh, this will this stress will always follow you. So the remedy for that is to let that go. You're holding on to stress, you're holding on to preoccupation when there's another option there for you, which is to relax and embrace a sense of completion it's actually it's easy to feel complete when we let go of our thoughts that tell us we're we're incomplete so this is a big part of uh if you really want to be a meditator yogi spiritually free any of this stuff or, or better at what you do um, then you need to to embrace a sense of completion you can even sit here in these silent sits or with me right now 
and just what if everything is perfect right now? What if you're fully finished in this very presence? What if everything's perfect? And notice how the mind tries to convolute that and actually mix in the imperfection again. And a lot of times we'll go have to do something that we don't even like doing that much, but we feel like we have to and we justify it. And then our perfection gets tainted again. You see? 